Welcome. Well done for, for coming. I don't know if uh, anybody did come at <laughs> half ten this morning. We left a little note. But uh, what, a, what a week. What a week we have had. Uh, we've got a new prime minister. Uh, our queen died. We believe she went to be with the Lord. And we have a new king, all in, <laughs> all in one week. It's, uh, it's quite a week, isn't it? I was thinking about the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, our current Archbishop of Canterbury. There's not many who get to do some of the things that he's doing in one week, if you think about some of the things he's been involved in, both in government, uh, with the royal family, uh, and with uh, King Charles. Um, so he's someone we can pr be praying for, um, uh, there's a funeral to be taken and then a coronation to be taken as well. Um, so, yes, anyway, I've gone off piste already, but that's all right. <laughs> but I just was conscious, I've been listening, like I'm sure many of you, um, I find these moments, hello, I find these moments uh, quite gripping. Um, I was brought up very much in a, with a mum who loved the royal family and used to drag us in the pouring rain, literally, to all sorts of uh, royal events. And if there was a possibility of the Queen coming anywhere near our house or our town, we would stand in the rain for hours waiting for her to come past. Um, it's just how I was brought up. But So I, I've been listening on and off over these last days to different interviews and different things. And I was struck by one lady... Uh, outside the, the walls at Buckingham Palace, outside the gates. And the, the reporter, I mean, they don't really know what to say, do they? And they ask them these questions. It's like, why did you come? <laughs> um, but she, she said something interesting. She said, well, actually, I, was, I'm not, I don't live in London. She said, um, she said I came for an awards ceremony. I, was, I won an award yesterday. Um, this was the, the day the Queen had died. Um, and she said, it just seemed right to come here. She said, I'm so aware that we're constantly, uh, we're currently living in a world that is shaken in so many different ways. And she said, the thing about the Queen was that she was like that anchor. She was consistent. She was always there. And she said, uh, and now she's gone. And, and everything feels quite uncertain. So it seemed right to come and stand here and be here with others. And I was just struck by that. Now, the reporter didn't have an answer to give her, but there was someone who was expressing something that I think many are feeling. And um, just recognizing that there are all sorts of wobbles going on, on in our world at the moment. And for us as believers, what does that mean? But... For those that we're working with, our neighbours, our family, our friends, the people we meet, how are we to be towards them as well? So I was just aware of the amount of wobbles, really, whether it be financial, uh, political, uh, war going on in Europe. Um, and personally, there will be those who are struggling with suffering with sickness in different ways. And people can feel very uncertain and unsure. For us as believers, where is our security? Where is our hope? What, what hope do we have? Where is our focus, is my question. Where is our focus? What are, we, what are we looking at? Somebody was saying... Oh, you know, there's so much on, on the television at the moment. It's just there all the time. What's our focus? What are we looking at? We might say, we're looking at the wind. We're looking at the storms. Is that what we're looking at? Are we looking at, oh, look at this, and what, what's the mortgage going to do, and, and what's the interest rate going to do, and what's this new king going to be like? What's the new government, new, new prime minister going to be like, etc., etc., etc.? What are we looking at? What are we focusing on? And as I was reflecting on that, I was reminded of a great hymn, which I think, are we going to give it a go? Is that the hymn you and I were talking about on Christ? No, maybe not. Anyway, okay, we, we may, we may, we may not. But you will know it 
and some of you will be able to quote it, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And there's an interesting phrase. It's an old-fashioned, we've heard quite a lot of old-fashioned language this week, if you've been watching any of the telly. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. What, what, what does that mean? Well, I dare not trust anything, however good it might look, that, to lean on. A frame is something that it frames a picture, yes, but it, it's also a door frame, something that's solid. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. There's lots of things that are being offered. There's lots of op options. But the hymn writer says, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. However good it looks, it has the potential to break. <laughs> it has the potential to fall down. But wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. And here again was a, was a quote... Here again was a quote from, from the Queen. Um, she was quoting from Pilgrim's Progress. And somebody uh, alluded to Pilgrim's Progress. And uh, I've forgotten the name of the two characters, but one of them is drowning and the other one is holding them up. I think it's Hope is holding up uh, Faithful or one of those in Pilgrim's Progress. And then he shouts out, and this is something the Queen had mentioned, she sh Hope shouts out, it's okay, I can feel rock. I can feel rock. Holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ. What is it we're going to be talking about this week with neighbours, with colleagues, with family, friends, with, with those around we meet in the shops? It starts with what we know. It starts with where are we standing. It starts with where are we looking. Hebrews chapter 11, there's a, a great list of people who are all commended for their faith, aren't they? It's an amazing chapter to read. By faith, by faith, by faith. And it lists all the great characters of the Old Testament. But then it goes on to say this. Right at the end of Hebrews 11, it says... Not one of them received what had been promised. So it's by faith. They're, it's not yet happened. All of these people living, Moses and Abraham, Jacob, David, it's by faith. But they, none of them had yet received the promise. There's something, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, but they've not yet received it. Because God's plans were still unfolding. And what's amazing for us is that we are part of that unfolding plan because there was something that was even better that was to come. And so chapter 11 really finishes. It says that together with all of those, we would be made perfect. Together with all of them, we would be made perfect. You think, well, how? How are we going to be made perfect? Well, there's been a lot of announcements that have happened this week. Hasn't there? Um, I don't know if you've seen some of the announcements. Some of them even with trumpets and with shouts. The pageantry there is quite impressive. Uh, trumpets going off and people shouting, God save the king and so on. Listen to this great announcement. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, here's that phrase again, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. This great announcement. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts <clears throat> appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. There is a favor that comes directly from the throne of heaven. 
There is a favour that comes to his people. There's a declaration. There is a saviour. There is hope. There is a rock. There is a messiah. Everything else may be shaking. Everything uh, may be uncertain. But there is a declaration over us. I'm leading us to worship in just a moment. But as we come to worship, we are people of a great announcement. A saviour has been born to you. His name is Christ the Lord. He's the Messiah. He's been born to you. And so just then turning the page, as it were, into Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, they're all pointing, they're all pointing, they're living by faith, and they're saying, it's coming, it's coming. Let's throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. You find yourself getting entangled, even as you watch the news, you watch these things, you listen to what people are talking about, politics, whatever it might be. Things can entangle us very quickly. Let's throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles. Let's run the race with perseverance, the race that's been marked out for us. How do we run that race? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. He started it, he will finish it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. That's the phrase I want you to have in your heart today and in these days. Consider him. Consider him. When you feel wobbly, you feel unsure, fix your eyes on Jesus. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Think about your focus. Think about where you're looking, where you're focusing. So there's an invitation this afternoon Throw off the things that would so easily entangle us, things that would pull us down. Fix our eyes on Jesus. We have an incredible message. We have a, we have a great hope to offer to people in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it begins as we ourselves lift our heads, lift our hearts and fix our eyes on him. Can I invite you to stand? Just going to watch a short video now that I came across this week. It helps us just to reflect on the life of our Queen, which is going to help us to lead us into communion because she, as, as has already been prayed, she was a believer and she loved to talk about uh, how the Lord had saved um, and his strength and all of those things. So I thought it would be good to show this video. Abby, maybe you could throw some lights just at the back here. That would be great. Um, uh, let's watch this. Um, and then I'll lead us. We're going to have some prayer as well, just after the communion. I'd love one or two more to pray. It was wonderful, Mike, the way you were praying. I'd love us just to pray for some things together as we finish. But let's just watch this together. It's with profound sadness, but also great thankfulness, that we remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who served so faithfully. As Britain's longest reigning monarch, the majority of us have never known a time when Queen Elizabeth II has not been on the throne. She has been a constant presence in an ever-changing world. When she was ten, her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated, and her father became King George VI. In 1947, the Queen married Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and they were married for 73 years. The Queen had four children, eight grandchildren, and twelve great-grandchildren. She saw many Prime Ministers come and go. Although the Queen was a world leader, she was consistently kind, hard-working, and respectful. She bestowed honour on those who made great contributions to society but she also paid tribute to ordinary people, whose work went unseen and unrewarded. 
the Queen carried out her duty to her country, cheerfully and faithfully. The Queen was also a Christian, and was always open about her faith. Six months before her coronation, she asked the people of the Commonwealth and the United Kingdom to pray for her, that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making, and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. God has certainly answered these prayers throughout her reign. In her 2002 Christmas Day broadcast, she said, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I draw strength from the message of hope in the Christian gospel. In 2014, she called Jesus her inspiration, role model, and anchor, who stretched out his hands in love, acceptance, and healing on the cross. Jesus is the king of all kings and queens, the ruler, reigner, and creator of the whole world, yet he came to serve, not to be served. In 2011, the queen spoke of our need for salvation from our recklessness and our greed. She said, God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. We will forever be humbled and inspired by her determination to dedicate her life to her throne, her people and her God. We honour her for her years of service devoted to both her country and God, and we thank Jesus, the King of all, for our Queen who served her King. The Heavenly Father, we just want to take a moment to thank you for the life of our Queen Elizabeth II. We want to thank you for her faithful service. In a few moments we will pray for her family. But right now we take our moment to say thank you for someone who believed you, followed you, read your words, opened your words and lived in obedience to it. We thank you for her. We thank you for her reign. We thank you for her example. We thank you for the Queen Elizabeth. Amen. Amen. So, we want to thank God for that Christian faith and example uh, that <clears throat> she displayed. And many people have read uh, things that she said um, over these last weeks. Um, it's amazing to think it was only a couple of months ago, at the beginning of June, that uh, we were celebrating the Platinum Jubilee. And as part of our open air service, I read a whole series of things that the Queen said, one of which was that that was mentioned there, something that she said in 2011. I just want to repeat it again. When she talked about the uniqueness of Jesus, um, although we are capable of great acts of kindness, history teaches us that we need saving from ourselves, our recklessness and our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important as though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. And uh, it's just so good to hear those words echoing again and again. Ashley, would you come? Ashley's going to come and lead us now. We're just going to have communion together. There's not many of us here this afternoon, so we can very much do this together. And then we're just going to pray, and I'd love us to pray for the royal family. I'd love us to pray for our new prime minister. I'd love us to pray for our nation. So in a minute, I want some of you to be ready to be brave and help to, to lead us in prayer, because there's not many of us, so we can just stand where we are and pray. But Ashley, come and lead us uh, in communion. Um, if I can just get you all to 
to go grab the juice and the wine now, and we're just going to take it all together. I think there's, this time is a great time to even symbolically do these things in unity. Let me just read from First Corinthians. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together, as the Lord Jesus did, and take it in remembrance of him. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For of, as often as we eat this bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink the cup together in remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we have this opportunity together as your people, as your family, as your expression of your uh, deity through your people here on earth in cows. We thank you that we can do this together in remembrance of you, that not only did you come to earth to show us the way, but that you became the way, that you became the one who actually brought us into life and life in the abundance. And so we thank you, we remember you, even today, we remember that death has been defeated by what you did on that cross. We remember today that the story has not ended. We do not remember a story that finished. We remember a story that is yet to be concluded. And we know the last page. We've read the end. The king shall return. And he will come back. And he will wrap this all up. And he will present a perfect kingdom to the Father. And he will hand it over and say, I have completed the kingdom, Father. And the Father will say, here is your bride. Let us feast together, the bride and the groom. So we look to you for what you have done. We look what you are doing now. And we look to the future, the glorification of our Christ. Amen.